Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time for a hot topic, and this one talks about this coastal road from Lagos to Calabar, and it says federal government coastal road to cost 4 billion naira per kilometer and completion in eight years. Joining me to have a conversation is Mohammed Abdullahi, is a public relations analyst. Good morning, Mohammed. Thank you for joining me. Good morning, Nigerians. Always my pleasure. All right. So we're talking about the coastal highway from Lagos um, to Calabar. Now, this is supposed to cut through um, from Lagos to Ogun, Ondo, Edo, Delta, Bayelsa, um, Rivers, um, um, also Aquaibom, and finally get into um, cross river states. So we're looking at a spread of nine states. Now, this you know project says to cost about four billion naira per kilometer, and we're looking at fifteen trillion in total. And also another information is it will be um, ready in eight years. Now, I just want to get some information about you. What do you know um, about this whole coastal road? Yeah. Um it's a fantastic project. I think uh, for a very long time, Nigeria has not had a singular project. Uh, there's this uh, gargantuan and then, uh, and then monumental. Uh, what do I mean by being monumental and gargantuan? Is the fact that uh, mm -hmm. this singular project is about uh, taking uh, more than at least 80% of Nigeria's current budget. I mean, for this year. Uh, if you look at the budget for this year, it's about 23 trillion. So we are saying in about eight years, we have more than 15 trillion naira spent on one singular project. Uh, so it's a, it's, it's a very big and very, very monumental project. You know, and like you mentioned earlier, it's cutting across nine states of the Federation. And if you look at the design of the project, uh, it's a five lane on each side, uh, which means it's a 10 lane project. Uh, and then... Uh, in the middle of this uh, 10 lane, there will be provision and design for a rail line, which means uh, it's, it's a modern project uh, because you have provision for a road and then for a rail. Uh, perhaps in the nearest future, in, in the nearest future as well, uh, the country will also be thinking of like instituting a rail on that uh, corridor, which, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. Uh, so on the um, general route, is a good one. But I think what the Hula Balu has been is the cost of the project. Uh, but uh, we should understand that uh, big project costs big money. You understand? And uh, uh, again, what is also important that people should understand is the fact that uh, this road, the coastal road, is not just on a road on a plain land. You understand? Because if mm. you look at, for instance, the distance between Lagos, and uh, Calabar or Cross River at the moment is more than 700 kilometers, about 790 something kilometers. Mm. You understand? Which means driving from Lagos on the existing road now would take with all the traffic jams here and there and all the bottlenecks and perhaps due to bad roads as well, would take more than 14 hours for you to drive from Lagos to Calabar at the moment, what we have. But, but with the completion of this coastal road, it is projected that it will take less than six hours from Lagos. So you can see the monumental changes, the differences between what we have now and what the government is planning, I mean, to spend this 15 trillion on. So uh, it's, it's, it's a big project because, like I said earlier, it's something that is on, 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 the, on, on the coasts, on waters, you understand? So uh, you don't expect what is spent on, like, on land, for instance. Uh, you know, you have bridges here and there. You have all the beams. And I'm, I'm not an engineer anyway. Uh, I know, but you, you have all pillars here and there. So that's why this road is very expensive. I'm not justifying the cost because, like I said, I'm not an engineer. I'm not a surveyor. But uh, I also understand uh, that such project definitely will cost more than if you are laid out on, on a plain land. So uh, this is a nutshell. This, in a nutshell, is... Uh, uh, what the coastal road project is all about, like the government has said, perhaps it's a public-private partnership thing because the government is also planning to have a toll on that road mm -hmm. in order to recoup at least some of these monies that, that is a mark to be spent uh, in the next few years. 
Okay, so I mean, you've said a lot, and I'm just going to write off, you know, the information that you've given me. So first, let's talk about the costing. You said you're not an engineer, so you don't, you can't really ascertain how much it should cost. But isn't this, isn't this where accountability and transparency is supposed to come in? Um, for instance, there should be an open bid um, for whoever is going to take on the project. Also, how do we know that it is not being inflated? Because you've seen, in fact, let's talk about you know the National Assembly, and you've seen where there's budget padding, where you know figures are being inflated. Could this be a case whereby you know figures might just be inflated as well? And then, don't we have to you know just compare prices with other projects like this? How much does it cost to actually create um, a one kilometer? Is that four billion? You know the actual amount in corridors like this. So with costs, how do we you know ascertain the transparency from the government based on this project? Uh, that's a very big challenge, a, a very, very big one. I think uh, perhaps uh, the Minister of Works, uh, uh, Senator Dave Omahi, will be in a better position to answer this question. But uh, uh, with my little, little knowledge, I will say uh, this is a very big challenge in Nigeria because I remember even the new EFCC chairman on assumption of office uh, around uh, October, July, October, uh, August, October last year, if I'm correct made a statement and made a press uh, briefing about how um, over bloated project and over bloated uh, contract mm -hmm. has cost Nigeria over 2.9 trillion in just two years. So yes, if people are raising the fears, if people are scared and afraid that uh, perhaps this project is also over bloated, uh, I think you don't want to blame some persons. You don't want to blame these critics because perhaps, I'm sorry to say, is our culture here that uh, whether it's government or, 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 or private uh, project and to um, have the culture of uh, inflating uh, the cost is, 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 is really uh, unfortunate. But it's, it, it's, it's like it's our culture. Uh, most times in government, if you follow Tracker, for instance, uh, what they do, uh, bring awareness to you know government projects uh, across the country, you see some of these things that projects are being inflated here. So perhaps, yes, there's possibility because, like you rightly mentioned, uh, the government didn't have open bid. And it's been, I think it's been uh, the culture of go governance here. Uh, uh, and some of these monumental projects that we've had, whether it's the train construction, the government just wake, wakes up one day and then, you know, grant contract or issue contract to a particular uh, agency or a particular company and so on without having an open bid. I think this is a major challenge here because, like rightly mentioned, I'll agree with you that this kind of a project should have been like an open bid where you have all the companies that thinks they have the way with that and the capability and the capacity to, you know, execute this kind of project, uh, compete and, 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 you know, put up uh, their bid and, and the best, uh, com not necessarily the cheapest, please, because sometimes the cheapest isn't the best, but the best company that can handle such uh, is granted. But it's, it's also not our culture. Like I said, the fact at every fact in now on Mondays, which used to be on Wednesdays, we just wake up and say we are issuing so 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 contract, so 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 so, so contract, which uh, in my own opinion shouldn't be, uh, particularly for projects that are mon monumental uh, in such nature. I, I also understand the fears of Nigerians. Uh, if we tell ourselves that, um, it has been alleged, uh, and I think it's confirmed also, is this, that the Chaguri group, I mean, Chaguri corporations yeah. that are very, very close, uh, uh, I mean, uh, to, to, to Mr. President, uh, are leading this project. I mean, the high-tech company that, 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 that is constructing this project. So people feel uh, it's a thing of uh, perhaps a favor and so on and so forth. And then, uh, because if you, are, if, if you remember, the, the Chaguri leader was part of the confidant. That was how he was described as part of those who accompanied Mr. President to COP29 uh, in, uh, in Dubai uh, late last year. You understand? So perhaps, yes, there might be no trust. There was no transparency in issuing the contract. But I think what Nigerians should focus on is the fact that, uh, yes, uh, in these eight years, there's perhaps the gov this government will be, because we only know four years constitution constitutionally now, mm. perhaps if they will extend to eight years, in the eight years that this government perhaps would be what I think Nigerians should focus on is that 
this project is executed, mm. as stated by uh, Honorable Minister uh, Senator Omahi, that the project might take up to eight years, uh, and then four billion naira per kilometer, uh, totaling about fifteen trillion naira perhaps in the next eight years. So I think that this should be our major focus now, since the contract has already been awarded. You understand, mm. and uh, we we'll, we'll, we'll keep tabs on development as Nigerians. Okay, so still staying on costs, because another thing that we know of and that you rightly said was the fact that they are going to create tolls. Now, these toll stations, um, you know, are going to be about 5,000 naira on the average, so for cars and, you know, trucks as well. And, well, the good thing about this is that each tolling station would have um, restaurants and, you know, park parking, different amenities that you can just, even fuel stations as well, that you can just have just each, um, just by each tolling station. But now here is my question, because since we're talking about costing, if this is being funded by the government, why do you have to toll it? Because I, I want to believe that, you know, the government takes taxpayers' money and in return you create infrastructure, um, you give them certain amenities just to improve the livelihood of Nigerians. So if this is a project that is being funded by the, gov by the government, why do they have to toll it and still ask um, these same taxpayers that they've gotten monies from to pay for the road as well? for the next um, foreseeable future? Yeah, I, I think it's simple. It's because the government is really trying to recoup money. Um, the fact is, uh, uh, we, we can't say that Nigeria is totally broke, but seriously, we needed a lot of money for so many things, security, uh, food, so many things um, across board. So if you remember earlier, we mentioned that this project is totaling about 15 trillion naira. Perhaps even inflation is not even factored in. So I am also very skeptical that perhaps in the next two, three years, there might be review. So, and if you look at 15 trillion naira, like I mentioned earlier, it is more than 70 or even 80 percent of the total budget as of today mm. of 2024. So, how do you spend 80 percent of your budget? I mean, for one year on a single project in the next eight years. You understand? Mm. You know? And remember, we are a mono economy. Uh, all of our earnings, perhaps 80, 70% is gotten from crude oil. Yeah. Crude oil is on the lower sales across the world. You understand? One, we don't even know what the next eight years looks like. You know, that's why I said, perhaps even inflation is not factored in. So there are so many factors, you know? So what government is trying to do is actually to recoup back some of the, perhaps not all, all but some of the monies in order to also have uh, you know, the opportunity to execute other projects. So I think in this, um, uh, in, in, in this you know, kind of situation, I wouldn't blame the government totally, seriously, because uh, you know, uh, the challenges are, are enormous. We have so many things to do with money, and then if you are trying to build in the next eight years, a singular project, just one project uh, with 15 trillion, perhaps that will create a lot of advantages. Like we said, from here to Calabar, we'll just take you, I'm sorry, from Lagos to Calabar, we'll just take you like six hours. You know, you mentioned that on each of the tolls, uh, you know, there will be restaurants, there will be uh, petrol stations, you know, there will be fun activities to do that when travelers will just park, uh, you know, enjoy themselves, spend money, and, you know, thereby also creating opportunities, opportunities and employment for those people that are there. You know, so it's a multiplier effect, uh, you understand? So I, I don't think the, the government should be totally blamed for this because uh, it's a huge expenditure. And then, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's our own doing as, a, as citizens to also uh, help the government in recouping uh, some kind of revenues in order to also uh, find such to execute other uh, tasking uh, projects. All right. I know that um, in some countries, I think in Italy, for instance, they have major roads and then they have tolls. And most times the, the money recovered from those tolls are to maintain, you know, such roads. So I can understand that if because I know one thing that we say in Nigeria is that we don't have a very good maintenance culture. So you're seeing the roads dilapidating, you're seeing buildings, you're seeing so many things that are just not maintained. And so um, I know that it's important to maintain this road. So if the money that the government is recouping is for the maintenance, then 
why not? But I understand you as well, you know, talking about just getting more money because that's a huge project. In fact, it's a mega project because if you're talking about 15 trillion um, Naira for just one, and since you said we don't even know what inflation is going to be like, definitely the, the government needs more money to be able to put in other sectors as well, such as education, healthcare, and, you know, just any basic amenities, power um, that the people need. But now I want to talk about continuity. I mean, the government that we have, the present administration, is for the next four years. So, for instance, Preventure, um, that is not the same ruling um, administration in the next four years. What is continuity of this project going to be like? Is this something that is going to um, move past administrations? Or is this something that maybe a new administration might just come and say, you know what, I want to do my own thing. And so this project might just be abandoned. Because now um, the, the, the current Minister for Works is you know, projecting about eight years for this. And we are not sure the present administration is going to be there for the whole eight years. This, this, this is a very challenging question. Uh, my apologies. <laughs> This, this is a very big problem that we've had over the years yes. uh, from federal level to state and even local government level. Continuity. Exactly. Uh, That's why I had to ask that question. Every, every leader wants to come and shine on mm -hmm. his or her own terms. Uh, okay, I don't want to continue with my credit. Sometimes even uh, with parties that are same. Yes, we've had these challenges across state. Yes. Uh, the same party, different leaders, and then you have abandoned projects everywhere. Uh, because they want to create their own, they want to have their own name, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but thank God for Lagos, for instance. If I, if I might use, use Lagos as an example, Lagos have been able to succeed to this little extent, in my own estimation, because the, of continuity in governance. You understand? Yeah. If we realize from the days of um, uh, the present, pre the present uh, president as governor, uh, up until now, you've had, you know, really no major abandoned project from one uh you know from from one administration to the other they understand that yes this is a state uh we are same party we are same people there's nothing wrong in continuing project you look at even the rail uh the intracity rail that was just commissioned across lagos you understand this is something that has been in design for more than 24 years you know successive administration designed this they got to this stage and now it's been completed by uh, uh, Governor uh, Babajide Songo. Yeah, so I think so. This is something that other states and even the federal government should emulate, mm. because uh, continuity is very, very important. Perhaps uh, in the sense that you know these projects are even very meaningful to Nigerians. Mm. You understand? So yes, uh, Nigerians should uh, should focus on this and then should plead with successful government uh, lobbyists, pressure group to continue projects that have impact uh, uh, with Nigerians. For instance, if, if we talk about continuity, for instance, the Empower program has been suspended by this, by this government. Mm. Uh, they are both APC. The past administration was uh, President Muhammadu Buhari, APC. This same administration have uh, suspended Empower, for instance. Some of, even though we know perhaps maybe it's because of the corruption that has to do with the humanitarian uh, uh, ministry. Yes, but I think this is a big challenge for us, and we are, you are very right. Mm. If perhaps we have a change of government in the next four years, perhaps it's opposition. Look, I, I, I read some of the things that uh, uh, the, the PDP candidate, Atiku, wrote about uh, the coastal uh, highway, mm. I, I mean, two days ago or yesterday. If the opposition party got hint of power in the next four years, I want to believe perhaps they might not continue with the project. Mm. Yes, you know. Uh, uh, perhaps, or, or maybe even if they will continue, they, they will want to change the contractors and so mm. on and so forth. So, but I think, uh, in essence, what is important is that whether it's the opposition or even a successful government from the same party, what is important is that there should be continuity. Yeah. You understand? Mm. Uh, the successful administration should succeed in implementing policies and projects of their predecessors that are of interest to the masses without necessarily abandoning them. Exactly. I mean, rightly said, because at the end of the day, it's something that would improve the lives of Nigerians. So that should be 
the goal that is paramount even more than your own ambition to say yes i want to shine um, i want to do my own thing and um, also the nigerian society of engineers have said that this would actually impact the state's economy so we should be thinking about about the economy of nigeria we should be thinking about how to you know just raise funds grow our revenue grow our gdp and make sure that everybody is happy anyways this is where we have to wrap it up on this segment thank you so much for coming I mean, it was a pleasure having a conversation with you. Thank you very much. Always my pleasure. Good morning, Nigerians. Thank you. All right, we've been speaking with Mohammed Abdullahi. He is a public relations analyst, and we've been talking about the coastal road from Lagos to Calabar, where the Minister of Works has said is going to cost about four billion per kilometer, and we're looking at 15 trillion in the next eight years where it will be completed. We'll go on a short break, and when we return, we'll be looking at our next hot topic. This one talks about a toxic cough syrup and NAFDAQ. Please stay with us.